interact with Annie, who's like uh, one of the educators. She's a, a program manager. Program manager here. Um, <laughs> doing a whole bunch of survey. <laughs> channel in a coastal marsh. It is also um, something that is smaller than a river that flows into a larger body of water. Holden's Creek itself um, is a tributary to the Chesapeake Bay. Um, it comes in right around in that circle. It would be like right here, but they don't really show it because it's kind of small. And um, it's, a, it's fresh water going in, and it goes into one of the more um, fresh little areas. It's like a little uh, thing <laughs> off the side, into the brackish water part of the Chesapeake Bay. Um, interesting fact that I read about when I was trying to figure out what this Holden's Creek was before I went there. Um, it has 90th percentile of coliform bacteria in it for the uh, shellfish growing area. So uh, coliform, that's like E. coli, but there are also multiple types, um, both from human waste and animal waste. Um, I was planning on snorkeling in here until I found this out, and I'm like, no, let's not do that. Uh, um, that's Holden's Creek. Um, when I went out, I went kayaking. I went um, uh, two ways, both towards the freshwater side and the saltwater side. And I was looking for water quality, so stuff like salinity, dissolved oxygen, pH, um, and also how the plant life changed as we went along from the saltier side to the fresh water side. Okay, why? Well, what is the purpose of what I was doing? Um, this past century, the uh, salt water level rose one meter, and that is fairly regular. It's not too bad. Marshes have been able to keep up with this. But in this next century, it's expected to rise three meters, which is a lot. Uh, now, marshes, they're really important habitats. They are nurseries to a lot of creatures. They also have so much diversity, and they also filter out wastes as they flow into larger bodies of water. And uh, they are, uh, the way they renew themselves is they have like plant matter that makes more sediments as they like grow and then die and then kind of, you know, just gets bigger and bigger. So they kind of raise themselves. But this three meter expected rise is going to be too much for them. So they're either going to have, the plants are going to have to migrate up or they're just going to be obliterated. And with a lot of development, it's kind of hard that for the plants to grow anywhere else. And um, I'm trying to, I wanted to look at the salt how far it goes up this tributary, and also um, what the plants are changing. So we need to like document what it's like, because it's going to change soon because of the salt getting higher. water for, and it would be like pure down water. 
Um, we also use a refractometer, which is used to measure salinity, which is the amount of dissolved salts in the water. And the unit is this little percent weird thing. It's uh, parts per thousand is what we used. And um, it also measures water density, and it correlates. So the higher the density is, the higher salinity. So you use it as you put, um, usually it's like two drops of water on this blue part right here. And then you look it up and you hold it up to the light and you look in and you'll see something that looks like that circle. And you read the line where the blue and the white is on either side. One of them has the salinity, one of them has the water density. So you would take that number. Um, so what I found about the salinity along Holden's Creek, it ranges from fresh water to brackish water. And these numbers are how many uh, the parts per thousand uh, of the salinity would that would be the ranges of uh, brine water, saline water, which would be salt water, brackish water, which is kind of like in between salt and fresh, and then fresh water. So we got fresh water and brackish water because it ranged from zero salinity up at the very top to uh, I think it's 4.2 at the um, at the base side. All right, so the X Tech X stick that I use, it measures dissolved oxygen, and uh, dissolved oxygen is the amount of uh, oxygen that's in the water. It can, it's usually like caused by if the water's more turbid, so it's like moving more, then there's more oxygen in the water. Um, good dissolved oxygen level is above six parts per million, and dissolved oxygen because creatures in the water need to breathe uh, oxygen to live, and so they need more. Um, so six is good, and sometimes there's less, sometimes there's more. The more it is, the better diversity, generally. Uh, so this is the YSI. Uh, it's pretty fancy technology. You can do a lot of stuff. It can measure dissolved oxygen, temperature, pH, conductivity, salinity, TDS, ORP, I don't know what here those are, ammonium, nitrate, uh, chloride, and barometric pressure. Um, I, we used it mainly. Uh, we used it for DO temperature and salinity, but um, it can be used for all these things. And this is the GPS, so we'd use that to record the uh, locations that we took the data from. Uh, so this is Holden's Creek. We this right here is the bridge. So we'd always start off by parking our vans here, bringing our kayaks up. And the first time I went out, we went out along the freshwater side. So uh, went up that way, and then we went out with uh, marine eco no, uh, with the uh, hydrology class down to the saltier water side. That. Uh, so this is where we took points along with the salt water with the college students, and this is the data we found. So the dissolved oxygen measurer was not working at the moment. But we have salinity and temperature and the depth that each one was taken at. So as, as you go on, the salinity it slowly gets more saltier until 4.2 is the saltiest it got at that eight section up here. Uh, so this is how, and the pH doesn't really change that much as you go along. And uh, when we went up the freshwater side, we found that the salinity went from 2.0 at the bridge to a zero um, once we got to that curved section up there. And uh, also the DO, which is dissolved oxygen, was 10.4 to 12.22, which is really, really good. So it's really good for diversity in that creek area. Uh, there we go. Okay. So I was also looking at the plants that were around. So this is the plants that are more at the saltier side. Um, they were lots more grass, grasses and rushes, which are a type of grass that has these little uh, like brown seed pods that come out of it. And so this is what it looked like along that area. So you can also see there are also other plants growing in there, but it's mainly grasses. And then this is at the bridge, so this is in the middle. There were uh, cattails and brushes and still lots of grass and uh, it was like kind of muddier along the edge and you could find some uh, fiddler crabs down along the saltier edge but you couldn't find them past the bridge. And then this is what we found more up on the freshwater side. So of those, you uh, can't really see them but they're these little, these are called pennyworts 
and there were a bunch of those along the edge, and there were trees and bushes growing in, but there were also still some grasses along the edge. And that's the end. Um, thank you, everybody.